All right, in this video, I'm going to do another example about collinearity and distance. And the idea is if you know uh, two of the distances between three points, you can conclude that those, all three points are collinear if you find the remaining distance and if the two smaller distances um, add up to the large distance. So what the heck do we mean here? So suppose we want to know, um, suppose we ask a true or false question, this point 2 comma negative 9, 1 comma negative 6, and 3 comma, uh, excuse me, negative 3 comma 6. We want to know if those are collinear. Um, so let's see, maybe, I, maybe I'll graph them here real quick. So here's positive 2, and maybe negative 9 is way down here. So maybe the point 2 comma negative 9, maybe we'll label that as our point A. We've got positive 1 um, comma negative 6. So let's see, we'll put negative 6 down there, and there's positive 1. So there's uh, 1 negative 6 and our point B. And then we have the point negative 3, but that's way up there at 6. So we want to know if these three points are collinear. Okay, so maybe we'll call this our point C. Well, certainly my artistry is pretty bad. They don't look collinear, but um, I was pretty sloppy labeling things. So who knows? Maybe they do actually lie on a line if you have a good artist. So the only way to really figure it out is we're going to have to find the distance between each one. So we're going to have to find the distance between the point uh, 2, negative 9 and 1, negative 6, positive 1 and negative 6. We're going to have to find the distance between uh, 2 comma negative 9 and negative 3 comma 6. And then lastly we're going to have to find the distance between the other two pairs of points, um, the other two points, uh, 1 negative 6 and negative 3 comma 6. So a little tedious, we're going to have to use the distance formula here three times, hopefully it won't be too bad. So if we find the distance, um, so if we find the distance between these points 2 comma negative 9 and 1 comma negative 6. Again, we're just going to have to use this, the uh, distance formula, which says we subtract the x-coordinates and square them, plus the difference between the y-coordinates squared. So I could take 2 minus 1, and then I could take negative 9 minus negative 6, which would actually, actually make a positive 6. And if we simplify that, um, we're going to get 2 minus 1, which is 1 squared, which is 1 negative 9 plus 6 is negative 3, negative 3 squared is going to be positive 9, and I'm getting square root of 10 as the distance between my uh, first two points that I had listed. We said we've also got to find the distance between um, the point 2 comma negative 9 and negative 3 comma 6. So if we do that one next, exact same way, um, we'll have to subtract the x-coordinates squared, subtract the y-coordinates squared. So I can take 2 minus negative 3, which will make 2 plus 3. And then I'm going to have, um, if I do negative 9 minus 6 quantity squared. So let's see, 2 plus 3, that's 5 squared. 5 squared is going to be 25. So negative 9 minus 6, that's going to be negative uh, 15 squared. And 15 squared is simply going to be uh, 225. And that's going to give us a value of the square root of 250. So let's do our very last one here. If we look at the distance between, um, let's see, 1 comma negative 6 and negative 3 positive 6. So 1 comma negative 6 and negative 3 positive 6. Again, we're, we're just going to have to find the distance. So I could take 1 minus negative 3, which would make 1 plus 3 squared. Um, plus, so then I'll take negative 6 minus 6 quantity squared. And if we simplify this, we're going to get, um, let's see, so 1 plus 3 is 4 squared, which is 16. We'll get negative 6 and negative 6, which is negative 12. And negative 12 squared is positive 144. So if I simplify this, I'm getting the square root of 160. Okay, so the three values that we had here, we had the square root of 160, we had the square root of 250, and we had the square root of 10. 
Again, what we're trying to figure out is if two of these lengths add up to the other length. Well, in this case, we would clearly have to take the two smaller lengths. So really now the question reduces to if we take the square root of 10 plus the square root of 160, does that in fact equal the square root of 250? If the answer to this question is yes, we'll say they're collinear. If the answer is no, well then they're not collinear. Uh, to do this, what I'm going to do now is just start simplifying radicals. So the square root of 10 doesn't really simplify, so I'm going to leave that alone. I could write uh, 160 as 16 times 10. Likewise, 250, I could write that as 25 times 10. Again, I could even emphasize this is 1 square root of 10. So we've got 1 square root of 10. We could pull the square root of 16 out as a 4. We'd have 4 root 10. We can pull the 25 out as 5 root 10. And hey, uh, so again, we're kind of asking ourselves, are these equal? But definitely, because 1 square root of 10 plus 4 root 10 is going to give us 5 square roots of 10. And lo and behold, hey, that's what we wanted to get. So that does, in fact, mean that the points, the original points, are collinear. So my artistry was bad. Pretty bad.